I spent way too much money on this iPad not to use it. Like many students, I got roped into the narrative that you need to get an iPad. What do you mean you don't have an iPad? My life was so much better once I got an iPad, so I got one. I drained my bank account for the newest, biggest iPad at the time, but I never really used it outside of taking notes and watching videos. I never really took the time to learn the features that made the iPad unique and treated it like an iPhone with a really big screen or a slightly less functional laptop replacement. And because of this, I kind of lost interest in my iPad and almost stopped using it altogether. But it turns out that the problem was me. I just had to put in a little bit more effort. So once again, I went through a bajillion YouTube videos, I scrolled through numerous subreddits and articles, and spent days on Pinterest trying to build the best iPad setup. So if you're a designer, a student, or just a good old iPad owner, here is my new and improved, productive, and aesthetic iPad setup. So this video will be split up into four parts. We're gonna talk about specs, we're gonna go through a tour, I'll show you some of my favorite apps and what I use my iPad for, and then in the end I'm going to give a tutorial on how to set up some of my favorite features. Before we get into what's in my iPad, let's talk about the device itself. I got the big boy, the fourth generation 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And at the time of this video, I'm on iPad OS 17. In terms of accessories, I have the second generation Apple Pencil, and I switched between this Amazon case and the Logitech Slim Folio, which folds out to reveal a pretty sweet keyboard. I know that you guys have seen those paper-like screen protectors everywhere, and I really wanted to get one so I could try it out for you guys, but it was $60, and I could not justify that. So I bought a bootleg matte screen protector off Amazon, and we will use that instead. I've also been seeing those skinny metal Apple pencil tips all over TikTok, so I thought I would get that and try it out for us as well. Guys, that was really hard. So scratchy. I kind of like it. Now that we've gone over the iPad accessories, let's take a look at what's in it. This is my home lock screen, and just as a note, all of the wallpapers featured here are from Pinterest. I've put a link in my bio below to my Pinterest account where I've saved a bunch of these wallpapers and widget photos, so hopefully you guys don't spend as long as I did sifting through everything looking for good backgrounds. So on the left here is my widget dock, which gives an overview of the apps that I frequently use. On the top left here, it has my upcoming events, which is connected to my calendar. Below that is the weather widget, so it tells me the temperature and the conditions outside. I have this which connects to my email and shows me if there's any notifications. I also have a summary of my sleep quality. I have two shortcuts. This one is connected to my Notion page. And this shortcut is for my good notes, so I have quick access if I want to take notes for my lectures. Finally, below that, I have an overview of all of my devices that are connected to my iPad, as well as their battery lives. So this allows you to access your very frequently used apps right from the lock screen and just makes it a little bit more functional. If we go ahead, swipe up and unlock my iPad, here is my home screen. Oh, it's so cute. On the left, you can see that I have multiple different widgets and on the right are all of my apps. So my first widget here on the top left is my Google Calendar and it tells me what day we are in the month as well as all of my upcoming meetings, events, and classes. I find this particularly helpful when I have a very meeting heavy day so I always know what's coming next and I don't miss anything. Below that, I have these adorable little widgets and at the end of this video, I will be showing you how to set that up so make sure you stick around for that. This one here on the left shows the time, and this one here on the right is just here purely because it's cute. Beneath that is a widget holding my shortcuts to my focus modes, and this is my favorite part of my iPad, and I'm so stoked to show it to you guys. So how it works is that I have three different focus modes depending on what I want to use my iPad for that day. So we are currently in the home focus mode, and this is kind of my baseline view. If I want to use my iPad casually, just search something up or watch videos, this is the view that I'm going to be in. But as you can see, if we switch over to a different focus mode like study, 
<laughs> it changes the background, it changes the widgets, and it changes the apps to only show what you want to see while you're studying. This is honestly a game changer for my iPad because I used to be so easily distracted by all the apps available on my iPad that I would never get any work done. But with this, all of the widgets and all of the apps are specifically tailored to what I want to see when I'm studying or when I'm in my lecture. And we'll get more into this in a bit because there's even more features that are attached to this. And this is my video focus mode and it has everything to do with my YouTube channel, video editing, thumbnail making, it's all in here. But for the meantime, let's go back to the home page and we'll talk about what else is in there. My last two widgets in the home page are going to be the same battery view so I can always keep track of what needs to be charged. And next to that is very quick access to the self page in my Notion workspace. This allows me to quickly check off a daily habit, to look at my kitchen page, or to log in a journal entry. If you want to know more about my Notion setup and how I use it to organize my life, please check the video in one of these cards up here because I gave a full tour of that in a previous video. In terms of apps, if you can't tell, these icons look a little bit different because these are actually custom icons that I made to make my home screen look a little bit cleaner and more aesthetic. If you are interested in actually downloading these images and using it to customize your iPad, your iPhone, or really any device, I'm actually selling it in an Etsy I just made and you can find that link below in my bio. I made these because I found that a lot of the apps that I use for studying and productivity weren't available on the icon packs that were already being sold online. I specifically designed these with you lovely students and productivity gurus in mind and made sure to include icons for different apps like Notion, Anki, Zotero, Obsidian, Grammarly, and more and you can find them in the Etsy link below in my bio. Once again, at the end of this video, I will be showing you how to download the pack, how to set it up, and how to customize your own icons to make your iPad that much prettier. If not, no worries, I totally get it. I too am a student in deep, deep debt. So I found some free icon packs, but I've included them in the description below so you can download those as well, whatever works for you. As a brief overview of all of the apps that I have here on my iPad, I'm not gonna talk about everything, but I am going to show how I organize it. The apps that I use most frequently on my iPad, such as Photos, YouTube, Netflix, and Pinterest, they're just out in the open, so I have very easy access to them. But for other apps that I may not be using on a daily basis, but I still wanna keep on hand, I have them categorized into folders, so it's not out in the open, but it's accessible if I need it. So now let's say it's time to study or I'm in class and it's time for my lecture. Like I said earlier, all I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on the study focus mode that's going to change our wallpaper and it's going to change the apps that are available to us. It gets rid of all those other apps that can be possible distractions, leaving us with only the essentials. Let's start by talking about the widgets again on our left. We have that same Google Calendar here that's going to be on all of my views because I always like to see what's going on. Below that, I have a widget that is a countdown to a specific date. This one is set to remind me when my next midterm is. Having this here is a constant reminder of how many days I have left to study and is a really good kick in the ass to tell me to get back on the grind. Below that, I have this Pomodoro widget from Poma Focus, which is an inline Pomodoro timer, so I can start it like this over here and I can time each Pomodoro study cycle. And right next to that, I have quick access to my school page on Notion, and that is a shortcut to my lecture notes, to my to-do list, and everything else that has to do with school. As you can see here, I was very selective on what apps I allowed while I was in my study mode. It's mostly going to be things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis while I'm either taking notes or if I'm reviewing. So I have things like Anki, GoodNotes, my anatomy app, Osmosis. We're gonna go in more detail after this. Another cool feature about this study focus mode is that there are a lot of settings that you can't see behind the scenes. So what happens when I click the study focus mode is that not only does the wallpaper change and the featured apps change, it also automatically silences my iPads so I won't get any calls or messages from anyone. This allows me to fully get in the zone so there really are no distractions and there are no excuses. I also have another really cool feature where if I bring my iPad to medical school and it can detect that I'm in that area, it's automatically going to go into study mode. So I don't even have to click it, it'll know where I am and automatically go into the study focus mode. 
Finally, if I go into video view, it shows all of the apps and widgets that pertain to my YouTube channel, anything graphic design, and video editing as well. I have a link to my studio page on Notion, which relates to my YouTube channel, so I have quick access to things like my content planner, script drafting, and all that kind of stuff. Next to that is another adorable photo of this bunny and this bear. I try and minimize all the extraneous things in my iPad that don't have a function, but it is nice to throw in a cute photo every now and then. So on the right, you can see all of the apps that I use when it comes to making YouTube videos, if I'm making any graphics or doodles that go in my videos, or if I'm just posting content or responding to comments. This has everything I need. So that was the tour of my iPad. I hope it gave you some inspiration on how you can use different designs, which widgets and automations to make your iPad more functional for you as a person, as a student, and as everything else. Now that you have a better overview of what my iPad looks like, I'm going to talk about all the different ways that I use my iPad and what some of my favorite apps are for each of those functions. So the first function that I want to highlight when it comes to the iPad is a bit of a no-brainer. It's what I use the most. It's note-taking. When I attend lectures, I find that I learn best when I sit down and I annotate the lecture slides as the professor is teaching the content. I used to use both Notability and OneNote when it came to annotating my lecture slides, but I've recently switched over to GoodNotes since everybody was using it, and I have to say, I do quite like what I'm seeing. It allows me to easily group the lectures based on the content topic, and I find that it syncs very well in between my iPad and my MacBook, which was a very important feature for me. I like the fluidity of their pen, the shortcuts like erasing quickly by scribbling, and the different stickers that I could use to decorate my slides. Notability does have some really cool and unique features like their tape function, which allows you to hide and reveal content so you can test yourself. But I don't know, there's just something about GoodNotes that really works for me, so I think I'm going to make that switch permanently. That being said, there are so many other note-taking apps. We've mentioned Notability and GoodNotes, OneNote, but there's also Call a Note, Evernote, Bear Note, I think it's called. So in the future, if you guys ever want me to test out all of these note-taking apps and see what we like the best, I'd be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments. So we talked about note-taking. Kind of in the same vein is studying, and that's also what I really use my iPad for. Like I said in probably so many of my other videos, the main way that I consume content is through Anki, which is a very popular flashcard app, especially for medical students. It is a very good app that uses spaced repetition to allow you to memorize and learn thousands and thousands and thousands of different details. We learn different concepts and met at a very rapid pace and there are so many minute details that we have to learn. So using something like a flashcard app to drill down all of those details are pretty much essential. And I use my iPad to run that software. With the iPad, I'm able to use the touch screen, my keyboard, or an external monitor to go through all of these flashcards. So I like the flexibility in how I can go through my thousands of do cards. I also use Notability, and I guess now GoodNotes for doing practice exams, which is another fantastic way to learn. I complete a lot of practice exams, especially when I get closer to my exam date, and having the iPad where I'm able to mark up the practice test, answer it, check it, write any notes, it's so invaluable. And that's another way that I use my iPad. I've also started using an app called MindNode, which is an app that allows you to make those tree branch diagrams. Basically, you have a main content and then you start branching out into all of the different sub-concepts. It can be really difficult trying to remember the big picture, big ticket items when you're drilling down all of the minute details on Anki, but having something like this and having a visual mind map is a really good way to visualize the content in a fun and memorable way. I really like MindNode on my iPad because if I have my lecture contents on my monitors, for example, I can also have my iPad on the side and start making those mind maps while I refer to the content on the big screen. Continuing with the theme of studying, which as you can see takes up a very big part of my life, I also use my iPad for supplemental learning. There are so many different apps and educational resources out there that you can refer to when things just aren't making sense in your lectures, which for me occurs a lot. Some notable apps include Osmosis, which features a bunch of different videos that relate to different diseases, pathophysiologies, farm, anatomy, 
all that kind of jazz, but they do so through different graphics. They make it very visually pleasing and very easy to understand and has been a big help in terms of understanding concepts. I really like it on the iPad because they have their own app and the functionality is really good. I honestly prefer it over the browser, so I use it on my iPad quite a bit. I also recently purchased this anatomy app for almost $25 and I did shed a tear while purchasing it, but it has been extremely helpful when it comes to learning anatomy. As we approach our neurology block and we have to learn the million bajillion nerves that are throughout the body, this is extremely helpful to see where everything is in relation to one another, see how it's positioned, see how it functions in a 3D model. You can use it to hide and reveal different organ systems. You can highlight specific structures and just overall use it to supplement your anatomy learning. This is particularly great in the iPad because being able to swipe through, zoom in and out with your fingers instead of with a mouse is so much easier. I can also use my Apple Pencil to tap the teeny tiny vasculature or the nerves, which is a big plus. So I only have this on my iPad and it's been wonderful. The next thing I use my iPad for is as a second screen. It can be used as a timer for when I'm cooking or if I'm baking. It can act as a screensaver to add to the ambiance and the vibes. And I've recently downloaded this app called Pomo Timer. Like the name suggests, it's a Pomodoro timer, which is very cute, very pleasing to look at, and has a very simple functionality. So sometimes it's nice to just have my iPad to the side while I'm doing other things, and the really big screen makes it very easy to see from a distance and very nice to look at overall. The iPad is also wonderful for design, especially with a screen this big. I used to be a graphic designer and this was my bread and butter. I frequently use it for apps like Procreate and Canva and recently DaVinci Studio, which is the software that I use to edit my YouTube videos, came out on the iPad, so I'm excited to use it there. The 12.9 inch screen plus the Apple Pencil is unmatched when it comes to drawing different designs. So I use it to make my thumbnails, to make all the little doodles that go into my video, and also just for things like making promotional material for the school clubs that I'm in. So I really love using my iPad for drawings and different graphic designs, and I use it a lot for that purpose. And finally, my iPad is also very good for entertainment, which I use to watch YouTube, such as this YouTube channel, which if you haven't already, you should subscribe to. I also use it to watch Netflix, different movies and TV shows, and other movies that I have acquired in a definitely legal manner. So now that we talked about how I use my iPad, let's put it into practice as I teach you how to do all of this on your iPad or any similar device. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to download my icon pack off of Etsy and how you can use it to customize your app icons. So the first thing you're going to do is go to Etsy because that's where the listing is. And you can just go to the link in my bio to find it or you can just search it up like this. And here you can see the listing. I just have some photos of what all of the icons look like, what are some of the apps that are included, and also download instructions on both iPadOS and iOS, and we have a more detailed description there as well. So you're going to go ahead and confirm and submit your order, just like this. And then if you go to purchases, you'll see that you will receive an email where you have your download link. And you can open that just like this and then this will allow you to download the icon pack which comes in a zip file here on my ipad i just opened it in downloads i'm going to take a look at all of the icons that are available there are 100 of them and then i'm just going to select all i'm going to go to share in the bottom left screen and then I'm going to save the 100 images to my camera roll, just like this. Now I'm going to take a look at my camera roll and ensure that they're all there. Here they are, looking cute as ever. And that is how you download the icon pack off of Etsy and how you bring it to the camera roll. And that's the first step of customizing your icons. So now I'm just going to switch on over to the study mode and give an example of how to set up the shortcut that allows you to customize your app icons. So. We're going to look at Notability over here. This is the original logo, and I'm going to show you how we're going to change it to our custom icon. We're going to first go to Shortcuts. We're going to make sure we're in the All Shortcuts tab here on the left. We're going to the plus sign on the top right. 
and we're going to choose the action suggestion of open app. We're going to click app right up here and this allows you to choose the app that you want to change the icon of. So I'm searching up notability because that's what I want to change. Then I'm going to go to the share button in the top right corner. I'm going to add to home screen right here. I'm going to rename the shortcut to Notability because that's the name of the app and that's what shows up on the home screen. I just called it Notability 2 because I already made this shortcut. I'm going to click the little shortcut icon and this allows me to choose the custom icon that corresponds with the app. So here you can find the little pencil and we're going to click use and then add in the top right corner. And just like that, you have your custom app icon. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to add widgets onto your iPad screen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new home page by holding on the home button. We're going to swipe to the left to create a new page. And then we're going to click the plus in the top left corner to open up the widget suggestions. I am planning this home page to be my essay focus mode. So for example, if I'm writing an essay, this will be the widgets and the apps that I want to be available to me. I'm going to choose the widget that I want. Here I have Google Calendar and we could swipe through for different sizes. And I'm just going to repeat the same thing for all of the widgets I want to add, like a Pomodoro timer maybe. Maybe I want to add my Notion page. So I would add this page option, add the widget, and then I can hold that, press edit widget, and then choose the workspace and the page that I want to link the shortcut to. To add some of the custom photos like I had in my home pages, what we can do is search up Photo Widget, which is an app that you can download. I'm going to go through the same process of adding it to the home screen, and then I'm going to edit it and then choose a photo. There are different options, but I'm going to choose photo. I'm going to choose the album that's connected to, and then as you can see, we have our photo right there. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to repeat what we did earlier and I'm going to add our custom app icons via shortcuts. So I would be adding Notability, doing the exact same thing as I did before, renaming the shortcut to the name of the app, clicking the shortcut icon so we could change the photo to our custom one, pressing add, and there it is in our home screen. And I repeated it for Grammarly and Word because I feel like these would be apps that I would need for essay writing. The next thing I'm going to teach you is how to set up the focus modes. So as you saw previously, I had home, study, and video. And now I'm going to create an essay focus mode that we can toggle to. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our lock screen and we're going to hold it down until we see this customized page. Here you can see all of my different views and we're going to create a new one. If you need to delete one of your views, you can just swipe up, which reveals this trash can and it allows you to delete that wallpaper. But we're gonna create a new one. So we're gonna go all the way to the end and click this blue plus sign. So now we're going to go to photos and change it to the wallpaper that we want. Here we can customize the look of the lock screen and to the left we can add widgets onto the lock screen and it's very similar to how we did in the home screen. We're just going to drag and drop the apps that we want to see. So I have Chrome, weather, maybe a shortcut, a clock, and that's it. Next, we're going to press add on the top right, and it gives you the option to set it as a wallpaper pair, but I like to make the home screen a different wallpaper. So we're going to go to photos over here on the right. We're going to add the photo that we want, press done, and then we're going to change the focus mode to the new essay one that we want to create. So we're going to scroll down to focus settings. We're going to click plus in the top right corner, we're going to create a custom focus mode and call it essay, which I can change the color and icon of. And this creates a new focus mode. There are options to choose to silence notifications except for specific people or from specific apps. And you can make all those changes over here. But let's choose the lock screen that we just made. We're going to add that. And then for the home screen, we're going to choose the new page that we set up. 
with our new widgets and our custom icons. So for the essay focus mode, we're going to click the essay page that we made. All right, and that's our new focus mode. So this is our essay focus mode. Now to create the widget with all of the shortcuts to my focus modes, we're going to go back to shortcuts. As you can see here on the left, I created a folder for all of my focus modes because it allows us to set up the widget. We're going to go to that folder. We're going to press plus in the top right to create a new one. I'm going to search focus and click set focus under scripting. And then we're going to turn essay on until turned off. And that's going to be our shortcut. What we can do here now is also change the name and the color of this shortcut. So it looks a little prettier in our home screen. I'm just choosing the corresponding icon here. I'm really taking my time and I'm choosing the color as well. And there is our shortcut. Now what we can do is hold the home screen again. We're going to go to shortcuts. We're going to swipe through until we see the option with four shortcuts. We're going to add that widget, move it to the correct place. And then once we're done, we can hold on it so we can customize it, edit widget. We're going to choose that folder I showed you, which is our focus mode folder and you can see that we have it right there and now we can toggle between essay home study video and then back to the essay mode that we just created hope you found this helpful so that was my productive and aesthetic ipad setup i hope you've gained some inspiration on how to build up and design your ipad and turn it into a tool that works best for you try changing up your wallpaper adding some new automations and some new widgets and turn your ipad into something that you get excited about when using i am so excited to see what you guys are going to do with this and all of the creative ways that you can make your ipad work for you. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them down below and I'll try and get to them as quickly as I can. And if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos, don't hesitate to drop them down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.